Hey everyone, how you doing? Hope everything is going well with you. I'm preparing for Overland Expo in Flagstaff next, the following weekend. So I'm actually gonna be heading to Arizona this coming weekend. And uh, I'm gonna take the truck over to Ben and Eric over at uh, Arizona Toy Pros. That's uh, Ben's shop and Eric with State 48 Overland, who if you've seen their videos on my channel, know that uh, that's where I've been getting all my work done on my truck down there. Not all of it, but you know, the fun stuff, all the fun stuff. Um, so as I'm preparing to pack up, um, there's some new items that I'm testing out and trying C communications wise. I uh, got a new shower that I'm gonna try out and I'm gonna roll in some B-roll because when I try to shoot this outside in my driveway, the wind down here in Southern Colorado is just so violent that you couldn't really hear anything but wind in the mic and I don't want anybody to have to hear that. So backed it up into the garage and um, yeah, so I'm just gonna shoot some B-roll and overlay that because I have a couple thoughts on the CVT shower that I bought, the mounting. Um, and also there's been some updates to the truck um, that I don't think I've mentioned. The last time I brought it to State 48 Overland, uh, we did a Nitro re-gear on here, the Nitro 529 gear and pinion swap on this. And that's been probably about, I don't know, five or 10,000 miles, uh, probably closer to 10,000 miles. And so far everything's been fantastic. But uh, I haven't been doing a very good job of maintaining my suspension. So I <laughs> uh, need to probably have either, hopefully not a rebuild, possibly a rebuild, but the Heim joint, uh, the bushings, uh, it's, it's creaking and snap, crackle, pop a lot. Uh, anyways, when it gets wet, it's squeaking really bad. And I should have been lubricating it uh, more, well, period, and I hadn't been. I uh, had been lubricating the ball joints for the upper control arms, but not the Heim joints uh, on the King shocks, the King 2.5s that I have. So uh, I think it's just gonna be a simple bushing, uh, but you know, it might be a rebuild. So we're gonna document that as well. If you're into truck suspension, uh, you can follow, follow that, that little saga along. Let's talk about the CVT shower. About the CVT shower from uh, Spirit of 1876, which is a Overland off-road shop in Castle Rock. Kind of spur of the moment, I just bought it because I was like, yeah, let me try a shower. Um, didn't do any research beforehand, probably should have. The mounting on it, uh, I noticed like initially when I took out of the box, I was like, oh, interesting. I can't really, it's like a fixed brackets, but I put it back in. Well, when I put it on the other day, it is problematic that it has fixed mounting holes on the back versus something like a 23-0, uh, whether it's an awning or in this case, the shower has slots on the back. So you could just drop a bolt in there, slide it around, put your L bracket on and marry it up to your crossbars on your roof rack. I run a CBI Prinzu rack. It doesn't match up with that. I sent the dimensions to some friends um, who have Tacomas, some Arizona guys, Tacoma John, Allen, tail hook actual and I was like, hey, you guys run up uh, up top um, roof racks. Can you measure or can you tell? And they're like, yeah, it wouldn't fit on this either. So I ended up ultimately just being like, well, I guess I'll keep it. I drilled new holes and mounted it. It's just that the back plate has cutouts, I'm assuming for weight reduction, which is always a plus, but what it does is it limits the areas of where you can actually drill new holes through. And because you're actually drilling holes through the back of the rain cover, now I actually have some tiny holes that could allow moisture or water to get in. Not exactly the best engineering design. Um, I like CVT. I've had one of their tents now since, uh, I don't know, uh, probably three or four years. Uh, the Mount, the Mount uh, Shasta Pioneer Extended Stargazer tent. It's big, it's heavy. They make quality stuff. Sometimes I just, I don't know. I don't understand why companies do the things they do. So anyways, um, it's mounted. I'm gonna try that out. I'm kinda using it for um, 
like a privacy pop-up, uh, pop-out tent real quick to deploy, maybe do a shower with that. Um, not quite sure yet. We'll see how it works, testing it out. Um, as far as power goes, normally I run my Yeti 1500X, which you see here, or my Yeti 400. Um, I was sent this power station from Ninja Bat, Ninja Battery. This is the 540 watt version. They actually now have the 560 watt version out. And these run about 380 bucks. Um, they offered me uh, a discount code just to uh, give to people, which I think is like a 10% off, but I'm not gonna do that until I actually know if I recommend this product or not. So I'm gonna try it out on this trip. My parents are coming along. They're bringing their Forerunner. So we're gonna head down together. So having a little extra power will be good. This will give me an opportunity to try this thing out. Uh, the one thing I don't really like about it is it doesn't have a 12 volt output uh, built in. So I can't run the fridge off this, but I can run everything else. It has a 60 watt USB type C, a couple of USB type A ports, some AC ports. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it, so far with my tests, it's, it's worked really well, but I haven't actually really used it yet. Uh, I did test it with my Starlink dish, uh, and this draws with the router about 19 to 20 watts. So pretty low power. Um, and that's great because this will allow me to go out and stay off grid where I don't have hotspot service through T-Mobile or Verizon for longer periods of time. And if you don't know, um, I said I use a Gazelle T4 hub tent. It's kind of like my mobile office. So I got my table in there and everything kind of use it as an office. And so this is, this is something new I'll be trying out. So if you want to see how well this works, definitely hit that subscribe button, follow along for that mobile office setup and uh, how this connectivity works. So far with my testing in Colorado, it's worked really well, but I haven't tried it out outside the state. Uh, and you know, it, it's, uh, it, for, I'm in a couple forums and works really well for a lot of RVers, no problems, but until I actually try it for myself, uh, we'll, we'll let you know or I'll keep you posted. I also swapped out uh, recently the tailgate insert. I was previously using the Mountain Hatch and I like their products and it's like food grade, you know, and everything, but all the corners where the bolts were started breaking on me. And so I, uh, I was like, well, I don't really know how long this will hold up with breaking in, in both corners. I didn't do anything. I mean, I just, you know, screwed it in. It just, I guess over time, uh, just these are the weak spots. So I uh, reached out to Greg at Pack Racks and he hooked me up with a new tailgate insert, which I've been running and it's aluminum, haven't had any cracks, haven't had any issues. I know a lot of people like, like these and I like the mountain hatches. Um, and I remember it was like food grade cutting board. I, this gets so dirty. I mean, I have stuff back here. So I have separate cutting boards I use for food anyways, but that is kind of a cool feature. Um, but uh, you know, uh, whatever, Hey, they're all us made and that's really what matters. So mountain hatch is USA made pack racks is USA made. I'm really stoked to support USA companies. And then this isn't a poo poo on mountain hatch or a poo poo on CVT. Just, I'm just talking about my experiences and, and, what I like or don't like, and what's working for me and what's not working for me. Um, you can see I picked up a one wheel. This is the Pint X. Uh, I'm gonna be taking this with me to Overland Expo and as well as my electric mountain bike. Uh, I thought about bringing my analog mountain bike, but I figured we're gonna be kind of a little good ways away from where the Expo is from where we're camping. And they have a shuttle and all that, but I was like, well, you know, if I wanna just go get something or whatever, It'd be easier to have some like electric mobile devices <laughs> or uh, vehicles, not devices, but vehicles. So bring in the one wheel and my specialized turbo Levo. Uh, I might do some more video content on mountain biking. I like to ride analog and e-mountain bikes though. Lately, uh, the e-mountain bike's been kind of great for doing like longer rides in a shorter amount of time. I live only a few miles from the Pueblo State Park where the reservoir is. There's tons and tons of miles of trails. I don't know, I wanna say hundreds of miles, but it's gotta be over a hundred miles of, of trail out there. And I love being able to just hop on there right from my house and, and three miles from my house, I could be in Pueblo State Park and start hitting all the mountain bike trails. I kind of start to lose steam. I'm not in the best shape right now, but after about 12 to 15 miles on my analog bike, I really start 
like feeling like I don't want to venture out and check out other things where on the e-mountain bike I can do 20, 25 miles, have a great time, still get exercise and get to see things further. So I'm really liking the electric mountain bikes. I like the one wheels. I know that the, the e-bikes are really popular right now. So um, I kind of, I just like them. I really have, have a good time with them. So I'll be bringing those with me. I'll be testing out this Ninja battery, 540 watt. I'll be testing Starlink uh, in and around, you know, the Phoenix area and up in Flagstaff, up where the Overland Expo is gonna be held at. And uh, yeah, testing out the CVT shower. I might be looking at some other products while I'm down there. I'm thinking about also swapping out uh, or having a, a temporary, you know, two different rack systems. So I'm talking to Greg at Pack Racks. Uh, about another modular bed rack or what kinds of accessories because he's always doing cool stuff. He actually made this rack system for me on site <laughs> for the Diamondback cover and it has worked out really well with both my heavy CVT uh, rooftop tent and the iCamper. The iCamper, this is the SkyCamp Mini. Um, it's considerably lighter by, by about 40 pounds. I don't even tell this thing back here. One of the things that I like is the tent at a certain height. And I set the camera up this angle so you can kind of see, hopefully you can see, that when I'm driving, I still have visibility through the rear window. So even though this is kind of blocking the top part of the rear window, I can still see cars behind me. Um, when this sat lower, bef back before I had these crossbars, I was running the KB Voodoo bars, and they sat pretty low, so the entire back window was completely blocked. What I'd actually like to do is move these racks up, possibly another four to five inches. Um, yeah, it'll you know, sit up a little bit over the cab, the tent will, but that doesn't bother me too much. Uh, and remove the Diamondback cover uh, and put a, a slide in for my Dometic CFX3, I think 55 uh, model, 55 IM. Uh, so, because right now with this current setup, I can't fit my fridge in the back. These sound like really like first world problems to say. I can't fit my fridge in the back of my truck, but I would like it in the back as opposed to doing the rear seat delete, which is what I normally do and keep it in the back seat. I'd like it in the back here. Uh, and that would also just give me more room and allow me to use the truck as a truck more often. However, for those long trips where um, I'm parking and sometimes keeping the vehicle in town, especially when I'm in Atlanta, I like having the diamond back because I you, though you could break in to anything if you had enough time and, and enough willpower, it does uh, create more security in keeping items locked up in the back. Most of the time out here in Colorado, I'm not really in a situation or an environment like that. So having more usable space would actually be more beneficial to me for the activities that I do. Um, so I'm going to be talking to him about some options for that, but um, you know, so check out the shop and stuff. So I'll have some some more content coming out over the next couple of weeks for our trip upcoming down to see Ben and Eric at State 48 Overland and uh, Arizona Toy Pros. Um, we're gonna put a tune on the truck, which will be nice because being on 33s and now re-geared to 529s, uh, it'll remove the speed limiter and also give me some power back and uh, just kind of balance things out. So we're gonna do a tune while I'm there in the shop. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I don't have any other major mods planned at the moment. I mean, the truck is pretty kind of getting really close to dialed in where I want it to be. I uh, just wanted to kind of share a few thoughts about so far some of the updated changes. Um, I will be doing a more in-depth video in the next two weeks on everything on the truck. And I'd like to do that with Eric since he was kind of the the... I guess the brains behind the build that I did, doing the King 2.5s, the RXT Leaf Pack, the Icon um, billet upper control arms. You know, I'm running the Bantam S Pod system with the uh, touch screen for all my lights. The lights I selected being out in Colorado, I went mostly amber. So I have a video kind of covering some of a lot of those initial build outs, my sliders, my bumper, and all that. So we're gonna do another walk around. Uh, where I, you know, I can have Eric on camera with me and talking about why we did the things we did. Because when I originally was going to build this truck out, I, what I thought I was going to do and what I ended up doing was pretty far apart uh, from where we are now. So if you like that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button, let me know, and I will make sure to get that content out uh, while I'm down there. 
and also just trying to get some good capture some cool footage of the expo and any new products out of course I'm, i know i'm going to be tempted uh i kind of like the ideas of maybe acquiring a trailer sometime in the future um i'm looking for a shower and really just you know kind of um in between you know off-road and, and functionality is kind of where i'm at with this tacoma because it pretty much is set up full time to be an adventure mobile i still have my 80 series land cruiser uh, which also kind of is my uh, home depot run trucks so when i need to get potting soil or wood that's usually the one i'm taking instead of this guy uh, just because it, tech, it can just fit a lot more uh, so anyways yeah if you want to uh, be updated on that follow along hit the subscribe button if you have any questions specifically you'd like me to address. I've got a lot of new camp stuff that I'm swapping out that I'll be doing content on like my kitchen stuff uh, as well, like kitchen and cooking and that kind of thing. My solar setup um, and how, how that kind of has evolved a little bit, how the communications with Starlink is working out. So if any of that is uh, of interest to you, let me know if, if there's any questions you have specifically. Put them in the comments. Also, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. I respond to all my direct messages unless you're trying to get me to join your OnlyFans account, which, you know, it's still a possibility, but, you know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be juicy. But yeah, reach out to me, let me know. I'm also working on total website redesign and possibly doing some, um, uh, like, new, pot, new contents uh, around, like, people's rigs or industry stuff and doing a podcast. So I've got some different, different things in the works um, and as they come to fruition and as they get launched, um, I'll be sharing you with them on my YouTube channel. So I hope you all are doing really well. If you're gonna be at Expo, let me know. And until next time, I will catch you on the YouTubes. All right, take care.